Hi everyone, um, welcome. Um, to start with, quick question, who am I, why am I here? Uh, I'm David Boyd, I work for Clear Channel Outdoor, an outdoor advertising company. Um, we're pretty big, we reach around a billion people every month when you consider us as a Clear Channel overall as a global group. Um, and so, what I'm really here to talk about today is how you bridge the divide between the online and offline world. What is it that makes um, compelling communication? How do you get past technology and get engaging communications with your audience in terms of marketing and advertising? What I really want to share with you today is some insights we've gathered over the past um, six, 12 months. Um, for me, one of the really interesting things about outdoor advertising is it's only now going through its digital transformation. It's truly one of the oldest, the oldest medium in terms of advertising out there. Uh, you go back to the cave paintings. TV, press, uh, radio have been through their digital transformation and now we're learning what digital means for us. The thing that for me is interesting is the strength in terms of outdoor. What was always strong for outdoor was the ability to simplify a message and some kind of communication into something very tangible, something that could be delivered with one image, one picture, one tagline. And that's something when we think about digital, you'll see. You'll see how the simplicity in terms of overcoming the barriers of technology um, can really deliver something interesting. So the three topics I'll, I'll walk through are really, the first one is about moving from online and digital into the physical world. How to make things tangible, real and engaging. The second one is to, to think about the realities of mobile marketing. In theory, we can talk about targeting and great algorithms. What's the reality when the mobile technology hits people's hands and hits people on the streets? How do they react? Uh, and as I said, kind of finishing off with simplicity. How do we overcome technology and understand technology and actually use it to really deliver effective communication? So starting with, in terms of communication, making it real, um, delivering something in um, the real world. For the creative community, you can imagine with TV when it first came along, they had to really understand how to use that medium. And the same with online. How do you best deliver compelling communications online with that new technology? Um, that's what we're really challenged with and we're trying to deal with in terms of mobile at the moment. The, the truth behind all that communication, what we really need to understand is that it needs to be personal, it needs to be um, experiential so that it becomes engaging for people. What does that look like? So here's a couple of examples from Google. Now if you think in terms of advertisers, you know, Google the biggest online um, brand in the world and also the people with the richest set of data. What do they do when they want to launch uh, voice search? Now, here's an example from London. To launch voice search and get people to use it on a mobile phone, what they're doing is they're giving outdoor ads. Uh, here's an example from London where you can see on a bus stop um, taxi numbers. Different examples on the tube, different examples uh, specific to each location. That was around two years ago. What are Google doing now? Um, at the end of last year, uh, Google launched a campaign outdoor for Google Now. So that's the new Google search app on your phone. And what they're doing is they're taking it out into the real world. They're not necessarily doing banner ads or mobile ads. They're putting it out there in the real space so people can see and engage with the ad. Um, so what they were doing is the ad was changing specific to each location and specific to the time of day. So in the morning you saw something about where the nearest coffee store was to that bus stop. In the evening, it was about cinema times or what film was on. Another side, a side point of this is what's really interesting is how long it takes for people to use the technology in a compelling way. These bus stops in London, there are a hundred of them, that had been installed three years before. And one of the specific things we thought people would be using 
was this ability to use GPS coordinates and deliver something specific to each location. And that took three years before Google actually came along and delivered something that way. So we've got this message out there that in the digital world, you can reach anybody, um, everybody, every time of day, uh, every day of the week, and everywhere they are, uh, this idea of permanent communications. Um, and that's what we really see with the stats about people who have that connectivity. The reality, though, is somewhat slightly different. And I'm sure your personal experiences of the ads you receive on your mobiles and online are very different. Uh, a classic example is we're all still receiving ads for kettles two weeks after we've done a search for kettle. And what we want is something else. You know, we bought the kettle two weeks before, now we want to have something else, something more engaging, something more bespoke. The algorithms aren't quite working. So the trends work for technology and work against technology. Um, you have ad avoidance. Social media is fantastic, but where does your ad appear in their feed? Do you really want your brand next to some of the other messages, top and bottom of that social media feed? So technology, fantastic tool, great opportunity, but real practical and tangible issues when you put it into people's hands. So again, just another couple of examples to say how do you then engage with people, even if you have a great social media audience, how do you get people to think about your brand and get their messages in a different way? Um, here I'll play a video from a campaign that ran in London um, uh, two or three months ago now uh, and really took a complex set of data and delivered something which looks really simple and engaging. So this campaign is still running. Um, the campaign only runs when a, a British Airways aircraft is above that sign in exactly the right location, when the cloud cover is high enough that it can actually see the plane. And then it reads online the number of the plane and where it's come from. I mean, we could be doing all sorts of other things about actually how many people are on the plane. What are they going to do after they've landed? Have they booked their car hire? Um, you can take it to a silly uh, degree but it is something really simple and engaging, using technology in a different way. Another a nice example of what you find when people have really cracked things is it starts to get spoofed. Um, this is a spoof from Domino's Pizza. Um, and what it had was the theory was when the Domino's Pizza man drove past on his moped, the screen would change and say, look down, here's a Domino Pizza guy. So, we can say we've, we've, we've gone past digital, in terms of a post-digital world. The divide between digital and non-digital is no longer there. The question is then, have we lost this distinction between digital and mobile? Is, are we living in a post-mobile world? Is everything now mobile and so we can make, it's irrelevant to us because everything is, uh, in, includes mobile? Well, the reality is somewhat kind of different from that. So if you think about media consumption, we can say, yes, people are spending 12% of their time in the US, this is data from 2012, consuming mobile uh, media on their mobile device. So the mobile media consumption has moved onto mobile. But then the logic says, therefore, you should move all your ad spend onto mobile. And in the US, that's $16 billion of extra spend people should be buying in terms of advertising on mobile devices. There's a big but. Actually, what happens with those mobile ads at the moment? What is the situation? Uh, Nielsen survey um, showing that we don't trust those ads. Actually, we find it unacceptable. We find it intrusive when those ads come onto our mobile device. What is mobile advertising? If you think about it, it's not just um, spam text messages, but it's also ads in people's feeds and social media feeds that people don't really want. So how are you getting the, your messages out there onto a mobile device? Is it intrusive? Are you using 
is it defaulting to an SMS text message, as it so often does? And so for the small amount of spend that you see going onto mobile at the moment, actually chief marketing officers aren't finding it's working. You know, this is a, a, a quote in terms of a recent survey. 47% of them actually don't like and aren't getting the value from the money they're putting on at the moment. So why should they be spending more? So the question then is how mobile device is really powerful, okay? It is your research tool. Um, it gives you access to all the information on the internet immediately wherever you are. It's your sharing tool. It knows who you are. It's got all of your social connections. It allows you to broadcast messages to your social circle every time of day, wherever you are. It's also your buying tool. It cuts through the buying chain and means that you can actually place that order and buy something uh, immediately, any time of day, any day of week. How do you get onto people's mobile devices, which you still want to do? And that is where we're finding outdoor is a great location for your marketing messages to be. It's the idea of giving people the opportunity to pull the content, see something, drive mobile search, drive that mobile engagement, just as you saw from Google. Not just um, providing that pull, but also increasingly there are technologies we can provide to provide a more immediate connection. Here's a campaign that ran in London um, last year for HarperCollins with the launch of Revenge Wears Prada as a book. And so not only are you um, driving people in terms of awareness for the campaign, but also you have that ability to download the first chapter immediately using QR codes, NFC, um, or just mobile search. Driving people, when you get into, onto the mobile page, what you see is the ability to download that chapter that you can take away, that immediate um, value you get from it, but also the ability to buy now immediately on Amazon and also a map to the nearest store. So you can give a really rich mobile experience, but drive people to engage with it through pulling them on through awareness rather than pushing onto their mobile device. The other side of purchase uh, we're seeing increasingly around the world is this idea of um, virtual shops, um, bus stops or billboards where online retailers are putting their product out there in the physical space so people have that better awareness of it and are able then when they're doing um, back online or on their mobile phone on downtime to make that purchase. But again what it does is it kind of cuts through the buying chain and actually you can buy immediately through QR codes or other technology direct from the panel that you see. Okay, so that's kind of where we are and what we're seeing brands do at the moment in terms of engaging with people on their mobile devices. What's coming next? One of the great things about a uh, global role is that you see it's not necessarily Western Europe that's taking the lead. It's Mexico in terms of people are spending more time on their mobile devices on the internet in Mexico than anywhere else. It's in Kenya and China and India that people are using mobile wallets to buy things more than they are in the UK or France. So the futures that we can imagine that we're going to see are things that we can start to see being seeded around the world here and now. So we ran um, quite an interesting campaign for me and, and showed um, uh, a sign to where we can go in the future in terms of bridging outdoor and social media at the end of the last year for Lady Gaga for the release of her new album. The campaign for outdoor, which can often take months to um, deliver a campaign, was delivered from concept to execution in just seven days. So it was insanely quick from just that first conversation to delivering the campaign. And I'll let the video uh, play the rest. Clear Channel Outdoor recently staged a digital out-of-home campaign to reveal the album cover of Lady Gaga's Art Pop in unison around the world. A tweet from Lady Gaga herself kicked off the reveal, asking her fans to use hashtag iHeartArtPop to see more. iHeartRadio DJs also encourage participation. Lady Gaga's album cover is going to be revealed on select Clear Channel billboards worldwide. Hashtag iHeartArtPop. In the 30 minutes that followed, the album cover was revealed sequentially based on the momentum generated on social media. Over 350 Clear Channel outdoor digital displays in 13 countries played the reveal. 
Once complete, the full album cover unveiled a sculpture of Lady Gaga by legendary artist Jeff Koons. I have been working on this for two years, and to see that image all over billboards around the world, uh, know that it was making a worldwide impact at one point, it really meant a lot. So thank you, Clear Channel, for your support. The campaign showcased the global scale, reach, and impact of Clear Channel Outdoors digital inventory, which marries the oldest and most enduring advertising medium with the newest technologies to provide huge creative potential for brands to connect with people. The stunt gained so much social media attention that hashtag iHeartArtPop was among the top three Twitter trends worldwide, earning 772 million Twitter impressions. So that was a relatively simple idea that came from a direct conversation with Lady Gaga's team seven days before the album cover reveal and really shows how when you combine social media together with online physical presence, you can really start to get that engagement and conversation going. And 772 million Twitter impressions from only 30 minutes of outdoor space is a real game changer in terms of um, how people are using out of home. Another side to it is something on a much smaller scale that ran again in the UK for Mini. Um, and they wanted to engage with people with existing uh, minis um, and do something a little bit different. This is, um, I suppose, slightly different as in it isn't some, it's something which had a lot of manual processes. It wasn't automated like all the other things have been, but does show with a bit of automation actually what you can do in terms of delivering real engaging and fun advertising. So kind, I'm absolutely blown away by that. Thank you very much. So one of the classic things about technology is we constantly change the name when our view of it changes. Um, you take machine to machine communication, that became the internet of things, that's become the internet of everything, that's now become wearables, peripherals and sensors. It will be something else again in a year when we change our mind about what this technology is. Um, we're starting to see that with how people are using outdoor. Uh, there's an advertising festival in Cannes every year um, well, uh, can Lions. It's a bit like the film festival for Out of Home. Um, and I'll just show you two campaigns from categories which aren't to do with outdoor. Here's a, um, a Cyber Lion. So these are awards for campaigns to do with online advertising. 
Coke is a brand where we are always trying to provoke more happiness in the world and do that in ways that are tangible and authentic. The idea of doing that for two groups of people who have been divided for five decades presents to us a challenge and an opportunity that's almost too big to not try to make happen. If great stories were easy to tell, everyone would be telling them. What's been the hardest part of, of this project? Every element of it, from the technology and, and taking technology that didn't actually exist and having to, to go find somebody who could build that technology. We had to come up with a way to have two people in different countries come together and interact in as real a way as possible. Arguably the most important part of making this experience real was not only being able to see the person in front of you and feeling like you're in the same room, but actually being able to touch them, interact with them, trace a heart, trace a peace sign, do something together simultaneously. I think that's one of the elements that really made this magical. This is a prototype. This is something that's never been done before. If you look through Skype or through the iPhone, iChat, it's always top down. It's like an ATM camera view. We didn't want that. So we moved the camera inside of the machine, shot at eye level through a screen that was holding a projected image. And your perspective would be just as if you were standing in front of that person. One of the main challenges was how do we see through a wall? How do we film someone through their own image? Everyone said, oh, that's impossible. But we knew there was a way. And the way we thought to do that was 3D. We basically have an HD webcam and a pair of modified active shutter 3D glasses that go over the webcam. So it allows you to shoot straight through the screen as if it wasn't there. And we needed a screen that was transparent enough to see through, but opaque enough to hold the image. All of our initial tests, the different screens that we were using, worked. They produced an image, but it was either clear, so it revealed the components inside, or um, the image was not bright enough. So this screen, it was a major breakthrough for us because it really made you feel like you were interacting with someone else. When you're doing an experience like this, where people have to connect, you need a certain amount of bandwidth. Now, going to India or Pakistan, that's not only not guaranteed, it's almost impossible to obtain. So we had to compress the video in a way that it wouldn't affect the user experience. One of the challenges was to make an interface that didn't intimidate people and make an experience that was inviting, making sure that the person in front of the machine knows what to do when they get up to it and that it's just a natural, seamless experience. Not only do we have to overcome barriers on the technology side, we had to overcome barriers on the location side. So cell phones not working, rolling blackouts happening. And big protests that are happening. And then between the two countries, there's been violations of a ceasefire. Adds another sort of interesting level to how careful we have to be in our preparation for this. I think the future of where this technology could go is really exciting. Bringing people together through happiness is probably one of the most positive messages that you can put out there. And again, the technology was just the vehicle that made that magical experience happen. So how do you take something um, online and bring it into the real world? How as a brand or as an advertiser do you bridge that gap? Um, so online campaigns becoming real, becoming tangible, getting into the real world space. Another take, so that's online, what about mobile? Um, here's an award winning campaign for mobile, um, which again won an award with no reference to outdoor, but it really is about engaging people in the outdoor space. Incredible things, smartphones. They connect countries, buy things, organize lives, entertain us with hundreds of games. But the more we use them, the more we're forgetting how to spell. That's why we created Scrabble Wi-Fi, a playful way to turn words into passwords. Scrabble placed free Wi-Fi hotspots in places where you can't get an internet connection. But to get online, you had to prove your spelling skills. Select the Scrabble network. Create any word using up to seven letters. Play it. The score from the word is converted into free Wi-Fi minutes. And the higher your score, the longer the connection. Words that you shared on Facebook doubled your score and time. In just two weeks, people played more than 6,000 words. That could fill 306 Scrabble boards. We gave away over 110,000 minutes of free Wi-Fi, showing that words can unlock a world of fun. Scrabble, bringing letters and people together.
I suppose what we're seeing and the message we're trying to get across is that technology is a barrier as much as it is an enabler for clear communications that cut across to people. And it's making those messages physical, real, engaging, bring them into the real world, which really changes that consumer experience and the understanding of your message that you're trying to get across. Get it out there onto the streets, not just in the digital world, bring it into the real world. And the thing that is true to outdoor that I think other media and other campaigns can really learn from is drive down to that simplicity of the message. So don't let technology become the barrier or the key component of what you see, but get something really true, simple and compelling out there. So I'll end with a final video. Um, it's a little reel of lots of more examples of how different companies and brands with completely different products have used out of home to really take their messages and bring it out there into the real world space. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much.